out of here. Um, the next one we're going to do is uh, one of the other originals of our EP. Um, this is an acoustic one called You and I. And while Derek's tuning up, we'll wait and watch him.
give them a round of applause. The band's going to take a little break right now. It's a great time for you to hit up Jesse's. If you haven't had some of that barbecue, feel free. And I know after you eat the barbecue, you're going to be thirsty. So you're going to want to grab some Rita's, and then you're going to need to wash that down with some water. So feel free to head over there. At this time, there's going to be some folks that are going to be walking around with some buckets to collect money. It's awkward for me to stand up here while I watch you give money towards an organization that I started and help put food on my table. So I won't lie. It's a little weird for me. So at this time, I want to open up with you a little bit about something near and dear on my heart as this is going on. Many of you wonder how you can make a difference. A lot of times you think just by going to work and putting a little money in a donation bucket is enough. But what I've noticed in America right now is that people lack hope. They lack relationships. Matter of fact, on a day-to-day -day basis, I meet people that are just flat-out lonely. One of the ways of changing that is by you opening your home up to people that you know. Every Thursday night, you are allowed to come to my house for dinner. Yes, you heard me. Every Thursday night, you're allowed to come to our house for dinner. We open our home up every Thursday night for people to have space just to come and be. Some nights there's five people. Some nights there's 25 people. We never know. But what we do know is going to happen is there's going to be a party. And we have a lot of fun opening our home up to people that come by, friends, family, the person you meet in the grocery store that seems a little sad, your high school mate from 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. There's been a lot of neat stories that have happened around our table. And see, what I realized is through this whole gathering concept, over the past three years I've traveled around the country to speak to youth groups, to churches and organizations. And as I speak, I'd think that I'd see change. You know, I think if I open my mouth, something's going to happen. Sometimes it does. But a friend of mine last summer said, you know what, I think you need a house. And if you look at your program, you'll see in there something called the gathering place. And my friend said to me, you know, I think if you had a house, you could train people on what you do in your community and send them back home. And I said, well, who's going to give me a house? And he looked at me and goes, I don't know. Somebody gave you a church to start a community center. I think God will give you a house. So we started praying a couple of us about getting a house. Now, I feel a little greedy saying that I want someone to give me a free house. Until back in November, a pastor of Pennsburg UCC Church came to me and she said, Scott, we have a house on our property. If you had a house, what would you do with it? And I started to cry. And I said, if I was you, I'd give it to me. <laughs> it's a little awkward. She looked at me, she goes, well, why should I give it to you? And I said, I want to take young adults and other adults, I don't care the age, whether they're a pastor in Colorado or a young adult from Satterton, and I want to teach them how to love their town and how to make a difference in their community and rally their community together to be something amazing. And she looked at me and she goes, I like that idea. Let's do it. So we went to the church council. They said yes. Went to the congregation. Now here's the fun part, folks. It's nights like tonight that make things happen. Because I stood in front of that congregation. They said, hey, how are you going to pay for this? I said, I don't know. They said, well, how long is it going to take to renovate? I don't know. Do you know all the work you have to do? Nope, I don't know. Well, how do you know it's going to get done? I said, because I always get stuff done. There was no plan. There was no process. We knew we had to fix this house up and renovate it so that people could live there. And we had about a June deadline. <laughs> so in that process, different people started to come over and work on the house. And a local church, Finland Mennonite, brought some adults over to do a service project with me. Now that's rare, because usually only students come out. It's very rare. I've never had adults just come out as adults. And their small group wanted to go make a difference and work with me. Well, that small group took it upon themselves to renovate that house. And it was amazing to watch in two and a half months as these people came in and they brought others in and the stories and the laughter and everything going to put into this house. This house sits right on Main Street. We call it the gathering place. And it's going to be a place that people are going to get sent to continue the work that we do here in Project Haven.
So I want to thank you for your donations that you give tonight. And I want to make mention to a couple people that you see in your program. Bergies is one of the sponsors. So if you need to go buy a car, go buy it from them and remind them to donate to Project Haven. You got that, right? When you go to land a supermarket and you're in your shopping, make sure you remind them that you found out because you heard about it at a concert for Project Haven. Bergstresser Real Estate, as you buy a home from them, feel free to remind them that you heard about them at a concert for Project Haven. When you go eat at Jesse's or go to Rita's, feel free to tell people that you heard about us. My hope is, is that this mission that I'm on with Project Haven ends sometime soon because we solved the issue of community. And that through the love that Jesus showed as he walked on this earth and the love that I felt from other believers in my life, I want that same supernatural love to go out throughout our communities. And I believe, folks, we can make a difference. So now we're going to ask for Susquehanna Action to come back out and let's give them a round of applause as they do.